Hello once again everyone, welcome to part 4 of Dr. Robotnik's Creature Capture. Today we head into Labyrinth Zone. The first of many underwater stages in the Sonic series, and the bane of many a Sonic player everywhere. Fortunately, Eggman is able to hold his breath far longer than Sonic can, so we don't have to worry about drowning here. So I do like that we get a little bit of standard platforming before getting to the animals in this stage. Nothing too complicated, fairly straightforward, but I like it. Now, even though we can't drown, the water does, as you would expect, slow Eggman down considerably. So we need to keep that in mind as we dodge these spinning spike balls here. As always, of course, if you get hit, you drop your animal, so we need to be careful not to do that. And, once again, it seems like Eggman is doing more good for these animals than harm. These animals are just panicking, running back and forth underwater, and the good doctor is placing them in an oxygen-filled, safe container. What a nice guy. So, I'm in that minority that actually really liked Labyrinth Zone. I feel that as water stages in the Sonic series go, it was one of the more fair and more fun ones. I enjoyed both it and Hydro City Zone quite a bit. Now, at the same time, I'm no fan of Aquatic Ruin Zone, or Ice Mountain, or a number of other water-filled stages in the series, so... I'm not sure what it is, but I've always liked Labyrinth. Never had any trouble with it. I think it helps that in the original Sonic the Hedgehog, the air bubbles regenerated way faster than they did in later games. So because of that, you were far less likely to drown. Uh, I like the atmosphere and music a lot too, but then again, I like the music of pretty much every stage in Sonic the Hedgehog. The uh, first game's music was primarily composed by the Japanese band Dreams Come True, and I think they did a fantastic job making the soundtrack. In uh, this particular ROM hack, the songs are sped up a little bit, but I think they still sound fine. Let's just put this last animal in the capsule and head back to the finish post. Finish post is right over here, and we are done with Act 1. See you in Act 2. Ready? Go! Find that capsule, it says. Hmm, I wonder where it could be. So this is a very vertically oriented level. We're going to do a lot of falling and jumping in this stage. And due to that sign's position, the game is going to buzz at me quite a few times in this level. I know, I know. Let's just carefully leap onto this ledge here and open the door. And this path is eventually going to make a full loop around to the bottom of that shaft that we just jumped over. Now in this particular stage, for each animal you collect, the water level rises slightly. It's not high enough to affect us just yet, but it will be. As you can see, it's already higher than it was. So let's go ahead and catch this animal down here while we're here, and take it back to the capsule. Even though the water is slowing us down, we still have plenty of time. Now, when we head back down, the water level is going to be even higher, as you can see. Now, let's slowly trudge our way through this passageway. And make the return trip. See, in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, Sonic also walked along the bottom of the water because Sonic doesn't know how to swim. The thing is, Eggman clearly does know how to swim. He even likes swimming so much that he has a pool aboard the Egg Carrier in Sonic Adventure. Then again, this game is set around the time of the original Sonic the Hedgehog. Perhaps it was before Eggman learned how. Or maybe I'm just nitpicking. <laughs> In all seriousness, I'm actually kind of glad Eggman only walks underwater. I find swimming controls in most platformers to be kind of awkward, so just walking is a little bit more natural for me personally. 
Anyway, let's jump on this spring one last time and put this last animal in the capsule and finish the stage. And that's it for Act 2. See you in Act 3 in just a moment. Act 3 is another time-intensive stage. You're given very little time to collect all the animals and run back to the capsule, so you need to make good use of each second in this stage. And what I like to do first is just collect these animals near the capsule before heading out. It doesn't really matter what order you collect them in, of course. Now this waterfall here is a good visual marker of where the capsule is when you're jumping from a higher point in the stage. Later we're going to jump down from the top area here, and just looking for that leftmost waterfall will tell me exactly where the capsule is so I can land in the right spot and not lose progress. As you can see, we already only have two animals left. Both of them are going to be at the top of the stage, so let's carefully make our way up there. This vertical shaft is a lot like the one that you chase Eggman through in the original Sonic the Hedgehog during the uh, boss of Labyrinth Zone, where Eggman just flees in his Eggmobile instead of fighting you. Needless to say, that proved to be a pretty effective strategy since the traps that he'd set up all over Labyrinth Zone do a pretty good job of damaging you even though he's not attacking you directly. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and call Labyrinth Zone the hardest boss in the game. Like, it's not particularly hard, but it's harder than all the others, in my opinion. Anyway, this is our last animal. Let's just put him in the capsule, cross the finish pull, and finish the stage. And that's it for Act 3, and for Labyrinth Zone. And we're done with part 4 of Dr. Robotnik's Creature Capture. Tomorrow we head to Starlight. See you then!